All right, Outlaw Radio Live fans, we are live in full effect with none other than Uncle Beats. How are you doing this evening? Man, I'm all good. And it's free like white lines on the corner like a stop sign. If you can't find me, look at your girl inbox. I'm um, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, it's definitely, you already know, man. I have to ask you, what made you decide to get your start in the music industry? Well, you know, man, really, I was just born into the music industry. Sam Cook is in my family, so it's like my family always know that we can win, we can win our music. So I got in the music game back in the 90s when I was a teenager, coming up around the Do or Die, the Twisted, the Gucci Conflicts, the Ghetto Boys, and I really just learned the business side of the game by being around all that. And also, speaking of, uh, you know, learning the industry, you are the vice president of HHMG Records. So, can you tell us a bit more about that, and how did it come to be? Well, when it came to be, I'm actually my crunchy Black's manager. I was managing Project Pat, and through that, I met the whole crew. So, finally, one day, after a show... Crunchy was there, and, he, and I just asked him, man, what you got going on? And, you know, he asked him, what was going on? Crunchy's actual manager, like, man, y'all need to get together, man, and work on something. So that's why he brought me in, being part of the label. So now we're partners, and we do a lot of stuff together. Oh, okay, my apologies. I, I always thought you were you were um, Crunchy Black's manager, so my apologies on that. Well, I wear, I wear a lot of hats, so it really, you know, I do a lot of... It really ain't no, um, you really went wrong, but it's just like I'm doing more uh, of the business side when I'm doing, you know. That's also my best friend, so we always together, so it's like, who else to talk to to make it happen than the person that's always with somebody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly, man. And since we're on the topic of Crunchy Black, my next question actually was, um, you've done, like, obviously tons of work with Crunchy. Um, as you just mentioned, um, how did you and him initially get connected? Like, did you ever meet him before that, before that, uh, before that time you told us about? Uh, yeah, I, I met him, um, cause I've been, uh, I've only been around three, six mafia since like, I want to say like 2010, 2011. So, um, that had me bumping into everybody, you know, but more so I came in through Project Pat to one of my friends from Memphis. He introduced me and Pat. And it's just like, we just instantly clicked and we just been super tight ever since. And also, um, not a lot of people might not know this about you, but you were also on the Steve Wilco show. Um, can you tell us a bit more about that experience and like, what what was the route around you being on that uh, on that show? Well, I was on the Steve Wilco show. The K- That's about... um. Alexis Scott, that's the uh, episode. I forgot the episode number. But I actually got caught on the show because her mother thinks I had something to do with her coming up missing. You know, because it's like, you know, in the business I'm in, I just come across so many different females that want to be down. And it's like, I take dudes on the road, I take females on the road with me. And it's like, once you run off and get to doing your own thing, you're going to have to get to doing your own thing. So we were in Vegas one weekend for the fight weekend. And she ended up going to Sacramento with some dudes. And it turned out bad for her. Then when she came back home, three weeks later, she came up missing. And for some reason, her mama thought I had something to do with it. You know, so like, I definitely, anybody go, everybody go check out the Steve Wilcox episode. If you type in on um, Leland Jones, which is my real name, uh, Alexa Scott, it should come up. It should be hard to find. Then that'll bring them up to up to speed. And with that, and I, I actually watched that um that up that episode as well, man. And you know, you you really tried your best to like offer help to to her mother and whatnot as well, man. Like even after you got proven that you were innocent, you know, the, the lie detector test and whatnot, you showed remorse. You're like, let me help you, and she didn't want that, man. I'm like, I, I'm sorry you yeah. had to go through that, man. I really am. Yeah, I actually, um, I actually offered to pay for the private investigator and all that, which is probably about seven grand. But you know, hey, people is how they is, man. People want to believe what they want to believe and do uh do it out 
how they want to do it, you know what I'm saying? But like you say, I passed a lot of tech test. So really, I just got to keep it moving. But it doesn't bother me. It's like I'm built for I'm built for uh, I'm built for this, you know what I'm saying? Just like with that fair case I had. Completely innocent. They just locked me up for filming videos with money and accusing my homies of being drug dealers, which, one, which some of them were. But that ain't had nothing to do with me, though, you know what I'm saying? And one question I've always wanted to ask someone that's been actually been on one of those shows. Like, you know, I, I don't know if you heard it back in the day, but a lot of people say those talk shows, you know, they're not real. There's something about them where so, a part of it is staged. I have to ask you, since you were on the set, um, I know your situation wasn't staged at all, obviously. Um, but when you were on the set, did you notice, like, anything that was staged on the Steve Wilco show? Or was it all, like, 100% real and raw? No, no, I'm going to keep it 100. And Steve Wilco, to me... To me they some trash bags, bro. Cause it's like I told them the only way I'm coming on that show is to clear my name, but more so help the lady find her daughter. So when you watch it, you gotta see a part where I say, "Hey, I pay for the private investigator," and she said, "No." I said, "Well, Steve, you pay for the private investigator," and they they chopped that out. Like they really chopped it down to like how they wanted it to look. But it's like, they ain't did nothing to help that lady. And they're making all that money, you know what I'm saying? So, I say nothing fake, but they did do stuff like, oh, curse out when you get out there and all that stuff. And it's like, um, I'm like, why would I do that? But like, when she was coming at me, it made it kind of easier for me not to go at her a certain way. Because I know she was doing what they told her to do. If you feel what I'm saying? Just yeah. to hype it up. That's what, that's what they wanted. And it, it's sad that those situations, you know, it's a real-life situation, and, like, TV shows like that have to play that sideball, man. You know what I mean? If you're really trying to help families and you're really trying to help get justice either way, you should at least do it down the middle and not try and clusterfuck some shit up, man. So that that's, that's pretty well, shy, Steve. That's how they did it. And I'm just like, whatever. Because it's like, I just want to see everybody win, man. That's what that's... That's what I'm around for, you know. That's why I feel I got as far as I've gotten, you know what I mean? Hey, man, you know, at least you offered your help, man. You know what I mean? You did what you did what you, uh, as, as much as you could, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. So in the year 2017, you released the album Life of Leland. Um, what's the inspiration behind that album, and where can our listeners buy hard copies if you have any, have any available, and where can they also uh, buy digital? Um, right now, all I got is digital, and it's on all the platforms that matter, and a few that don't even matter, so, if you go to Apple Music, if you go to Spotify, if you go to any of them, I'm on there, and the way, and I did that album, Life of Lisa, my name is Lisa, Lisa Jones, so, that's just, I felt like that was every, every personality I had been, from the time I was born until the time I did that album. And I was, um, I want to say I, I'm 41 now. I want to say I was 39 when I did that album. But it's just like, I'm really just preparing people for the stuff that's up and coming with that album. And also, May of last year, you were part of the sound the soundtrack for Check a Bag with other great artists, what was the experience like doing that soundtrack, and how did that uh, how did that soundtrack landing come to be for you? Well, um, my homeboy Glace Conway, he wanted to put that together, which he did, and he got you know Project Pazzo, White, P D Pablo, Punchy Black, me, Jamaican Tony, Damian Gates, uh, RX, a lot of. Uh, different un up and coming cats and we put our song Chase Money on there and I got some songs on there with my producer Psycho Capone and you know it was a good look to me any any artist that's trying to come up they gotta put out music a lot of these people want the credit for being a rapper but they don't put out no music so it's just like how do we even know what you sound like? How do we even know you rap? You know what I'm saying? So, uh, more than calm, you know. I got a, We got that. 
We dropped another mixtape, Root Behavior. This was all to be okay, the Conway dropping. But now we're going to drop Crunchy Black's album, Return of the Robbers. Then we're going to follow up with my album, Land of Leland. Hey, man, it sounds like 2020 is most definitely your year and Crunchy Black's year for sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, um, being yeah, so close with Crunchy Black was one of the biggest blessings that um, God then gave me, you know what I'm saying? Because around all these rappers, because I deal with a lot of them, I just sit back sometimes, like, man, I really, I really got here, you know? And it was just all through hard work, nothing else, you know? And the grace of God, of course, you know? But it's like, I'm really here with these rappers all the time, and I'm like, I know it's a blessing. That's why I try to make the best of it, you know? And you also did a New Year's Eve event party with Twista um, this past year. Um, how did you and Twista get connected, and what was it like working alongside him? Oh, uh, well, you know, I've been around with a Jill Ballers camp forever. Like, I came in the game. Actually, Twista's one of Twista's old managers, Fub, Big Fub, Reginald McKinley, and White Boy James. James Frazier, he was signed to, um, Twister was signing in with Jip Ball on Records. Those, that my, them was my homies in the hood anyway, you know, so it just all worked out. So I, I learned the, like I said, I learned the game hanging around the Chicago Cats and my Uncle Deli Bell, and I just, I just took it. When we were going on tour, I just always kept in touch with rappers or, people I met in the cities and I was able to come back through and do it with, with the next artist, you know what I'm saying? So it's just all about the relationships you build. As long as you, uh, you know, I ain't snitched on nobody. I ain't ran out for nobody money. I ain't uh, raped nobody. I ain't robbed nobody. I just keep it real cordial and I'm able to go all over the world with this now. Hey man, that's the best way to be is one is real 100. It's the best way to keep it, man. You know, so. so hey, I, I I got you on the radio. I got you on me on the radio in Canada now. You know, so it's like just off of being one hundred. Hey, man. You know what? And it's an absolute honor to have you on the broadcasting platform as well, man. Uh, you know, I I just I just give credit to uh, real hip hop when it's due, man. Thank you. Thank you. So, on February 15th of this year, you will be in Chicago at the NBA All-Star Weekend Edition Open Mic. Can you tell us a bit more about that event? Also, where can our listeners get tickets so they can come out and, you know, join the Open Mic? Tickets will be on Eventbrite, and the event is in Chicago, 2102, South Went, I mean, 2000, what is it? 2002, South Wentworth, Chicago, Illinois. Pop TV is the name of the place. It's going down. That that actually was an event that my homegirl Megan Monroe put together. And um, she had me come in to, we're giving away studio time, video, uh, distribution deal. With a you know, photo shoot, and that's gonna um have radio interview, magazine interview, and I uh, mean we can get them on your radio station too. I think about that. Hey but, man, uh, I'm, I'm up for that 110. percent Toss that in the mix, okay, sweeten the deal so a little bit. Well, I will let Megan know. Well, Megan here with me now. I'll let her know. I was on radio. They can get on. I was on radio also. But um, I'm just trying to. So many people hit me up every day. From grandmamas on down, talking about who could rap. So now I'm trying to give artists an opportunity to hear what they got and put them in a position to where, like I was just speaking before, their music will be out there and people can see it. And I also have to mention this, man. So it's called NBA All Star Weekend Edition. Is there going to be any like um, NBA All Stars or any NBA legends making appearances at that at that concert? Oh, of course it is. It's just um. I'm keeping it real with you, man. I'm from the open mic circuit. And I wanted to do it on a smaller scale. So, the place is a smaller place. So, I don't, I want the MCs to have a chance to get in there. 
but I tried to make it about the MCs and not my, not more so my celebrity friends. So it's just like I'm not trying to fill the place up with groupies. I'm trying to fill the place up with MCs. So it's like my celebrity friends that hit me up about coming, they coming. But I'm just not putting it out there because I want it to be about the rappers able to get a chance to really perform, and we see who's the best of the best. And you know that is completely understandable, man. You know you don't want to be mentioning all these big people that are going to be there, then a lot of people will be coming just for them, right? So I hear you on that, man. That's, that's keeping it 100. Right. They'll be, oh, bring out, um, oh, I want to see Anthony Mason. I want, it's just like, so I'm trying not to, um, say like cool sword, you know what I'm saying? Well, it's definitely, and honestly, sometimes it's, always, sometimes it's always better to have a surprise as well. You know, you show up, you don't know who's going to be there, right? Yeah, you know, like, I had a birthday party November 15th, and it was just off the chain. You know, Lazy Bone came through, of course, Crunchy was there, Project Pad, uh, the rest of the bar. It was just, people just came through, you know what I'm saying? And so it's like, you just, ne you just never know dealing with me, especially in my home city. You know, Chicago is my city, so you don't know what I'm going to do. Well, it's definitely, man. Um, also, the very next night after the NBA All-Star Weekend Edition, um, you will be alongside Crunchy Black and Trixie Too Sweetie. Uh, we'll be doing a video shoot for Twerk Twerk. Can you tell us a bit more about that music video? And um, where the like, what can we expect from that when it, when it drops? Okay, now that's a little different than the day before. <laughs> now this day, I'm bringing out all the women. Because it's like, again... All I see is events for men all week long, all weekend long. I see nothing for the women. So that one, I'm going to have Gucci V, who was Erica on the Bad Girl Club. She's coming. Then I got I got other female artists coming. And with this, we're going to let the ladies perform. You know, people, we're going to all watch the game together. We're going to shoot the video because we're going to have a twerk contest. You know, because that's, that's what I'm into. I like the ladies, you know. Excuse me if anybody else don't like the ladies. That's what I like. So we're going to have a toy contest. It's going to be a big party that day. So that day, right, I'm going to have celebrities there. Crunchy Black going to be there. You know, um, Crucial Conflict, uh, Do or Die. We got all type of people coming through from Chicago ladies, you know what I'm saying? You know, then... Um, uh, Sean Livingston. It's just all type of people I got now coming to mess with me that day. And also, last night you were in Milwaukee, Wisconsin at the event Saturday Night Vibes. Can you tell us a bit more about that event? And what was that experience like doing that concert? <laughs> uh, that was, now, that day, it was a great time. It was actually Jeanette and Gladys Ortiz. Ortiz. It was their birthday party. And they had, they had us there rapping and performing, and I was glad to be there. Milwaukee is so dope. Like, everybody should spend this time in Milwaukee. That's, especially if you like women, like me. I like the women, and it was nice. I can't wait to go back. So I have to ask you this, man. What's next for Uncle Beats? You know, you have um, the fe February 15th, you got the NBA edition. The 16th, you know, you got the music video shoot. You know, you're do you're re revising your album, man. But what's what what else is next, man? Anything else you want to let our listeners know while we still have you here? Well, you know, Crunchy Black Return of the Robbers. That's gonna be a series, and we're also gonna do an album where we're gonna, where we're putting independent artists on it. I got the mixtape with Project Pat and Crunchy Black coming up. I got my album, The Man Let's Even. Then we're going on tour for the Three Six Mafia reunion tour. We're going to be all over doing that. Then some of the dates is a day in North Carolina and a day in New Orleans where um, Master P and the No Limit crew is going to be on. They're doing them together. It's going to be one show. Ooh. So I'm really looking forward to being at the No Limit and 3-6 Mafia reunion show at the same time in New Orleans. That's going to be a super I'm show. Go I, I might make a baby that night, man. I ain't going to lie. It's going to be, <laughs> <laughs> be cracking. Hey, man, that sounds like a damn super show right there, man. That, that, that's insane. Yeah. I have to ask you, man, for the 3-6 Mafia reunion tour, is there any uh, Canadian dates at all, or is it just strictly uh, USA? 
Not yet, but it, it's probably going to happen, though. It's Most definitely, gonna happen, because I'll we, travel anywhere in Canada and see Three Six Mafia. All right, <laughs> if you want to come to one of the shows in the U.S., just let me know. You know, I got you. Hey, man, I can't say no to that, man. Three Six Mafia is lit, man. Um, so I have to ask you this, Uncle Beats. So this is one of the last questions I have for you, man. You know, you've been, you were in the music industry. You, you know, you're about, you work on the mic. You also help individuals in the industry, man. What's some great advice you can give some of these up and coming artists that are trying to make a name for themselves? Just keep on pushing. One, one door will always open another door. You know, and you just gotta. If you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will. You know, like. I really don't look to my family and friends to be my supporters because they know my story. They was right there. I look at people who are from all walks of life that I haven't even met yet. They vibing with me. Then I know, like, somebody understand what I'm trying to get across. But you just got to keep on pushing. You got to set realistic goals and accomplish them, and you'll be okay. Hey, man, that's some amazing advice, man. I have to ask you this, Uncle Beats. So this is the time in the interview that I give a chance for the individual that comes on the show. Just a chance to give shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to. And also your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you if they're not already doing so. Well, I definitely want to give a shout-out to God because he is so fresh. Because I know he understands me. And he got my back through all this. It's like it, it wouldn't be possible without him. Then I want to give a, another big shout out to Deli Bell, Project Pack, Punchy Black, because I feel like they always believe in me. And definitely Psycho Capone, because Psycho Capone is like the one who keeps me going in the studio, everything. Him, you know, I got, I got so many good people in my corner, man. I could do this all day. So, whoever down with me, I got number love with you, Megan, Monroe, saying right here is just like everybody who's around me. They, they're helping me fulfill my dream, and like it's just, it's just dope that all of us got like the same dream in mind, you know. So it's like. Surrounding myself with people that's on what I'm on, you know, it's priceless to be able to do that. So if you can, would you be able to give our listeners your social media handles? That way they can uh, shoot you a follow-up if they're not already doing so. If you're looking for me, you can find me on Facebook, Leland Jones, or Uncle Beach. Any of that will come up. Leland Jones, Uncle Beach. Instagram, Uncle Beach. Twitter, Uncle Beach. Snapchat, Uncle Beats. Uh, if you're trying to do some business with me, you can call me, 773-309-1405. Ladies, if you're trying to go on a date, 872-202-4967. I always get, uh, you might have asked around to get Megan if you call the other line. <laughs> <laughs> hey man you know what <laughs> hey you know what man that's the first time i ever had that happen on the show but you know what ladies if you're listening and you want some of the uncle beats you know give him a give him a call you know you might you might you, go, you might just probably take you out you never know man and i definitely come to canada so just let that be put that up there too I, I have as everybody knows uncle beats he's worldwide man so give give him a call what? I want to say, Uncle Beats, thank you so much for coming up on Outlaw Radio Live, man. It was an absolute honor and a privilege. Um, thank you so much again, man. You have yourself a wonderful night. Number, number love to you. Outlaw Radio, y'all keep it good, man. Clutch you black, clutch you black tomorrow. Oh, yeah. man, I'm telling you, I'm excited for that one. You can't go wrong with Crunchy Black and 3-6 Mafia. And I want to say right here live on the air, everyone, we have, you know, Uncle Beats here if it wasn't for Uncle Beats, Outlaw Radio Live and myself would not have Crunchy Black. So thank you so much for that, um, Uncle Beats. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for coming on the show, you might, man. You might have to do a whole. You might have to do a whole hour talking to Crunchy though, dog, because he got stuff to say, man. Hey, man, that is okay with me. Yeah. That is okay with me. So, <laughs> however, y'all work it, just let me know, man. I'm gonna be listening. All right, most definitely, man. You have a so wonderful night. We shall talk tomorrow. Number love. Number love.